Now, what was really going on, if you really want to know the half of the story that, that is not told generally so much and that is very little known, is the fatherhood that had to be identified and established in order for humanity in some sense of sanity and family to move forward. If you really start to study ancient cultures and see really what went on. See, in the beginning, it says that Elohim, Baruch Hu, created man in his image and after his likeness. Male and female made he then. There's a balance. To both of them as a couple and as male and female, he gave the same rights and the same prerogatives to both the male and the female who was the original generic sense man or that first humanity. This is where humanity, when we studied in the past, they were so-called gods and goddesses, but it was in a balance. There was ma'at, there was balance, there was unity. But there was a fall. This is what our brother, Coptic Hebrew brother Musa, Moses, as well as our New Testament, Coptic, Copto, Hebraic brother, Hawari Apollos, seeks to demonstrate, you understand, through the teaching and through the examples of. But see, most folks don't even know this. You know what I'm saying? They don't even understand the whole matriarchy, patriarchy thing that was going on. They only go back to, oh, you remember there was a time when there was the goddess was worshipped and there was matriarchy rule. Everything came from matriarchy. Before there was matriarchy, there was a balanced family with both the patriarch and the matriarch in order and in balance and together. Both of them with equal rights and prerogatives. There was no imbalance. See, the imbalance was, was outlined to us in Genesis as we see what occurs in the Ganetta Aiden. See, in the Ganetta Aiden really shows us where the meta, m metaphysical and uh, metaphorical uh, mystical, one more M word, uh, mythical, where the whole mythical beginnings in story and in type is. This is what, this is why the the Ethiopic Genesis, and we have a shadow of it in the Hebrew Genesis, is so important, especially when we put it in the context of the Kamite mythology and of the ancient Egyptian mysteries, the half of the story that wasn't told to us now becomes clear. Then we can even see the cycles. We can see how the way we're living sociologically speaking and psychologically speaking, you understand, especially us as the once lost but now found Beta Israel in this kind of a PTSD, how to make a slavery, you understand, syndrome. You understand this post slave, the post traumatic slave disorder. You understand? But it's a dis ease, it's a dis ease psychic of the psychic disease. It's a soul disease. And how this war between the so called male and female, the black male and female, has been instigated by our spiritual and physical arch enemies, have instigated, but now we are self perpetrating this in ignosis. In ignorance, we are self-perpetrating this on ourselves. Thus, we have the baby mama dramas. You see what I'm saying? We have the baby mama dramas, the so-called deadbeat baby father. Deadbeat? Who killed him? You know and who made him dead? Oh, he always was dead? Are we going to the original root of the truth? The, don't you know that how to make a slave? It talks about, it says um, how the woman, the, the white supremacist superstructure, being powered by Satan Diablos, basically said that we need to rearrange, disarrange the black woman's true position vis-a-vis -vis the black man, and that she is important to the self-perpetration of this curse, to continue this curse. So now we see through the feminism, see the feminism and the womanism that's going on among black people, especially the black woman today, Ones don't overstand, even a lot of the black women, they don't understand what they really have gotten into and how much of a curse this is on us, especially in these days and time when we should know the truth. And if we had known the truth and when we get to know the truth, it's the truth and the truth alone that will act as that spiritual colonic. You understand? The spiritual colonic, not just for our spirit, 
You understand? But for our souls, for our hearts, for our minds, and even physically, our life would renew because the soul is the mediator among the members. You understand? Know the, the psychical crisis that happened, this is what affects, is, is affecting our physical, earthly lives. This is the reason why you look at black folks now and you look at the amount of diseases and sicknesses and death amongst us. We think it's just a physical thing. We've lost our immunity. Our immunity, immunity is to say salvation. You know what I'm saying? We've lost that salvation. You know what I'm saying? Because the thoughts that we're thinking and, 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 and that which, you know, we're, we're living in the image of the beast. You know what I'm saying? So we, we're living like beasts. We're thinking like beasts. We're loving like beasts. And we've forgotten our way because we have not identified ourselves correctly. You know what I'm saying? Either you identify yourself, oh, I'm an African. Oh, 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 what tribe are you from? I'm, I'm an African. I'm a black man. I'm African. That right there is such a, such a, Old level, you understand? That was good in its time. That was one stage. That was one stepping stone. If you're still on that step, you understand? You haven't moved much higher. You have to use that as a stepping stone now and get to the next axiomatic level of your growth and your development. You see, because without that, we remain cursed no matter if we have a dread lot and we say, Yes, I rise to fire, I lie, I. If we're not in the teachings of His Imperial Majesty, you know what I'm saying? And keeping the testimony of his Christ, Gitachinamid, Hanatachin Yesus Christos, we are damned. We are doomed. You see, repatriation doesn't just mean getting on the plane and going back to Africa first. No, repatriation means to return to the pater, to return to the father. You know what I'm saying? The pata, the father. You know to return to the father. You know what I'm saying? To repatriate to that fatherhood of God in Christ. See, the race has to return to the fatherhood of God in Christ. Not the fatherhood and the motherhood. No. We've already been there in the motherhood. We need to return to the fatherhood. The fatherhood was not known and was not identified. We always knew the mother. You understand? Almost every baby or child that grows up with its parent usually knows its mother. I'm talking about in the natural genesis of things. Because there's a lot of just strange things going on in this society today. But we're talking about in that natural genesis. So the motherhood was known and was established and identified. There's exceptions to that rule, but we're not talking about the exception. We're talking about the rule. But it was the fatherhood that needed to be established. See, Abraham marks the establishment of the fatherhood, the identification and establishment of the fatherhood. Thus, circumcision in its true sense. You see, there's a false version of circumcision that's going on. It's probably how most of us who were circumcised were circumcised the wrong way. We can't go back, you understand, and do it over. But what we need to know is how is it done correctly as we move forward. You understand, because a lot of damage is being done through the wrong form of circumcision. See, that wrong form of circumcision actually goes back to the matriarchy or the fanatical forms of the matriarchy. You understand? We are now looking at the establishment of patriarchy. doesn't mean there's no matriarchy. It means that you have to put the house into order. You understand? It says, honor thy who? Thy father and thy mother. What does the proverb say? Hear, my child, my son, the instruction of thy father, and forsake not the law of your mother. So the mother-father balance, or the father-mother balance, goes about order. Our father comes first, spiritually speaking. We may have problems physically, carnally, in the natural with our earthly, fleshy fathers or mothers. That's understandable when you really recognize what the scripture says, that we were born in a world of sin, chatiyat, a world that has fallen short of the glory of God. What's the glory of God? Read it, study it, meditate on it, pray on it. See, if you don't know what the glory of God takes, you have to recognize this world, this universe, even the spiritual levels, this, this law, this, this spiritual laws, there are natural laws, there are spiritual laws. If we're ignorant of it, we may be ignorant of it, but that's no excuse. You see, ignorance of the law is no excuse, and we have the opportunity to learn these things, to study, and to show ourselves approved. And it's so important in this day and time to do just that, to study and to show ourselves approved. My brothers and sisters, because we're doing this in certain, certain a time, a time and a space, you have like time limits 
on this particular teaching. We're going to wrap up on this right here because this is the second second part. Actually, it's the um, the second part of the sabbatical study. We've touched on the generation of Isaac as well as um, Yahweh speaking to our ancestress. Our, one of our Hebrew matriarchs, and this is why we try to big up this point right here, because a lot of the sisters, they, 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 they lose sight of this, how much truth is in this that really needs to be understood in the proper context. And so we've touched on the birth of, uh, actually three parts, the birth of Esau and Yaakob and the sale of the birthright. Hopefully, my brothers and sisters, there will be more to come, Yah willing, and once again, Shabbat. Shalom, Senbet, Salam. I love you all. One love.